Hey everyone, welcome back to Love Wins, where the truth matters, because it's the truth that sets us free. Um, apologize for no video last week, um, major filming issues, and then when I finally did get it filmed, my son was in the midst of exams and busy and couldn't edit, and when he finally did get around to be able to edit, um, the video was corrupted, so couldn't do anything with it. <clears throat> so we refilmed for this week, and that video was also didn't turn out right with a different issue. So we're trying again. So hopefully this one will, will turn out. We are tackling an issue I've been purposely avoiding. And I've been avoiding it because I don't enjoy um, informing people of things that they deeply hold and helping them realize that it's not true. The reason I am willing to do it is because I want people to discover who God really is. So if we think about it practically... There are two basic camps in humanity. Either you believe there's a God or you don't. If you believe there's a God, then it comes down to, well, who is he? What kind of God is he? And there are many religions who believe that there is a God or multiple gods. Christianity is one of those religions. Christianity is uniquely different from all religions in that in every other religion you work your way. In Christianity, Jesus came to pay the way for us. It's absolutely and completely different. The question is though, what kind of God is the Christian God? And there are many different Christian denominations, but most of them hold the view that if you do not choose to follow God, you will burn forever and ever and ever and ever in hell. So I'm just gonna say right up front, I do not believe that is true. And I would invite you to please stay, hear me out. You have nothing to lose. If you don't agree with me, you stay where you are. If my questions um, have some meaning for you, then you will have to begin exploring the possibility that, that there is a different way to look at it. So let's start with the premise that hell is based on. Hell is based on the premise that we never die, that we're immortal. But the Bible does not teach this. So if you go to Genesis 3, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, the very first lie that the serpent told Eve was, you will not die. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It does not say that the wages of sin is suffering forever and ever. It says the wages of sin is death. The most famous verse in the Bible is John 3.16 which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, die, but have or be given everlasting life. In the book of Timothy, Paul says, God alone has immortality. In 1 Corinthians 15, when describing us going to heaven, it says that these, this corruptible body will put on incorruption, and the mortals will put on immortality, that immortality is a gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Why would God have to give us something that we already possess? And why would the Bible say that the wages of sin is death if it isn't? Because if we're going to be alive forever in hell, we're not dying. There is no dying. You say, well, it just means that we're dying out of this world and we're going into the next one. Well, that's, that's an interpretation added on to scripture, but let's explore that angle. Let's say it's possible that death just means leaving this world and moving to another place. Or your body dying and your soul living. And again, another idea that's been put on to scripture that just isn't there. <clears throat> Let me ask you some questions about Jesus. So... We believe God sent his son to this world to live a perfect life, to die in our place, to forgive us our sins, to exchange his perfect life for our sins. He gets the punishment. We go free. Now, that's the very basic explanation of it. Some people would argue about nuance in that, and I'm not going to go into the depth of it. It's, an, it's enough for us as Christians to agree, basically, that Jesus came to bear our sins. If Jesus came to bear our sins, he, that means he came to bear the punishment 
for our sins. And if the punishment for our sins is burning forever and ever and ever in hell, where is Jesus now? Most Christians would agree that Jesus is in heaven now. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, he went back to heaven. He was alive again. He resurrected. He's not dead. Not burning in hell for sure. But if the punishment for sin is burning in hell forever, then Jesus didn't pay it. And if Jesus didn't pay it, then we're in trouble. So we have two basic problems with the theory of burning in hell forever. One is that we're not eternal, according to the Bible. We don't have everlasting life until it's given to us by God for choosing him. And number two, if we burn forever in hell, Jesus didn't pay the price. Thirdly, if we believe that God is just, there is no sin that any human could commit that would warrant such a penalty. It's not just. So to teach that a God that God would do that is to teach an unjust God. Furthermore, to teach that God would say, listen, if you love me, and choose me, and serve me, I'll give you everlasting life, I'll take you to heaven, I'll give you all kinds of blessings. But if you don't, I'm going to put you in a lake of fire, and I'm going to burn you forever and ever and ever and ever. What kind of God would do that? You see, within Christianity, there are many pictures of God. And the frustrating part for me is that people aren't getting their picture of God from the Bible, from God himself. They're getting it from church. They're getting it from whatever Christian denomination they happen to be born into. Because most of us, if we're honest, our beliefs aren't based on what we've found for ourselves. They're based on what we've heard told to us and just assume that it's true. When we're born into something, it's first taught to us by our parents, our grandparents, the people around us at church who love us and we respect them and we think that they're awesome and they have the best interest at heart, and etc., etc. Why would we ever want to even entertain the idea that they taught us things that aren't true? But it doesn't make them bad people because they were taught things that aren't true. And our grandparents were taught things that aren't We just keep passing it on and passing it on and... At some point, someone needs to investigate and say, is what I believe actually true? If you go on the internet these days, especially on YouTube, there's lots of channels of people who have left religions because they started asking questions and discovered it wasn't true. Lots of lies. And the sad part is most of them, when they leave, they're so disillusioned by being lied to that they just leave God. Which I understand, I do, but it's unfortunate because God's not responsible for those lies. He didn't tell the lies. He makes us free. He leaves us free to teach, believe whatever we want. Our parents to teach, believe whatever we want. Our grandparents, preachers, teachers. The responsibility falls on each one of us to investigate and say, what kind of God is he really? So I've asked you some pretty basic questions. Are we immortal? Not according to the Bible. Did Jesus really pay the penalty for our sins? The Bible says he did. Yet he's not burning in hell forever, so that cannot be the punishment. The wages of sin is death. And God isn't even going to cause the death of the wicked. If you read the book of Revelation, it says that those who rejected God cry for the rocks and mountains to fall on them and hide them. They would rather be dead than see Jesus come. They don't want to be in heaven. They don't want his kingdom. Judas, one of Jesus' twelve, when he realized what Jesus' kingdom was about, he backed out. He didn't want it. He'd rather be dead than live in a kingdom of love, self-sacrifice, putting others first. He didn't want it. And that's fine. And God says, if that's not what you want, then you have this life for free. You can do whatever you want with it. You can help people. You can kill people. You can cheat. You can lie. You can steal. You can be honest. You can do whatever you want. 
And when it's over, it'll be over. But if you don't want it to be over, if you see what I'm trying to build, if you understand even an iota of what Adam and Eve gave up, if you can see in Jesus the kingdom that he's looking forward to, let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are many rooms. For were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. For Jesus, it's not about the mansions. They're already there. It's not about the rooms. They're already there. It's about making a room in our hearts for him. For us to really fall in love with God, for this to move past religion and right and wrong and arguments over doctrine, We have to see him for who he really is. And he's amazing. He is far better than I can describe. He's far better than I can imagine. There's a verse I love. It says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive of the things that God has prepared for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Only amazing people create amazing, unimaginable things. And many lies have been and continue to be told about God. Satan's whole reason for existing is to misrepresent God and have us reject him or serve him in evil ways. Do you remember one of the things Jesus said when he was here? He said a strange thing. And in our next videos, we're going to get into some of the strange things that Jesus said. He said, A day will come when men will kill you and think that they're doing God a favor. People serving a God who thinks that they're proud of us, that he's proud of us when we kill people for him. There are religions in the world like that. And unfortunately... Christianity has been that way in the past, and I see it moving that way again. And it can only move that way and become that if we don't see God for what he's really like. So think about it. Take your Bible. Ask God to lead you. Ask God to teach you. Ask God to reveal himself to you. Because he's not a God who tortures people for eternity. It's just not him. We'll see you next time.